So today I want to talk about stress and what stress has to do with pain. And I know that this is a really big, important topic for so many of you because with chronic pain, you know, you've probably been told that you that managing your stress will help with your pain symptoms and some of you may have actually noticed that when your pain gets worse it may get worse during times of stress and that sort of thing can kind of make you feel a little bit crazy can make you feel like well gosh is this actually all in my head am i just a stress case and so today i want to tell you a little bit more about stress and what role it actually plays in pain from a more from more of a nervous system perspective so that you don't have to feel like a stressed out mess or worry about if this is all in your head so we're going to talk about stress if you have chronic pain i'm sure you've struggled with this in some way right maybe your pain gets worse when you're under more stress maybe you have been told you need to manage your stress better in order to handle your pain. And maybe you've been told that your pain is just a result of anxiety, that it's just anxiety and you'll do better just to worry less and relax. And all of that can be super frustrating, right? Like we know that there is a link, a connection between stress and pain, and that the two are not mutually exclusive. Stress can cause pain to become worse and pain can cause stress to become worse. It works both ways and sometimes even there's there's this snowball effect that happens right so the more pain you have the more stress it causes and the more stress you have the more pain that causes and there's that snowball effect that happens right and so i know that that can make you feel really frustrated like it did for one of my clients nancy and her whole life with chronic pain she had been told over and over that she should just stress less she heard this from her friends, from her family, and especially from her doctors. And when she, so when she came to me, she believed that in part her, she believed that her pain was real, but in part she was starting to think that maybe they're right. Maybe this pain is all in my head. Okay. So, you know, she started implementing some practices in her life that she could um, that she felt would help reduce her stress. She started getting healthier. She changed some of the things in her diet. She started trying to do some yoga and practicing meditation. And she downloaded a few meditation apps and she even got herself into therapy because she believed after being told this sort of thing over and over and over for so many years that she just needed to fix something in her mind. Like she was, maybe she was exaggerating the issue or she maybe she was acting like a hypochondriac and she thought maybe she just needed some relief from all of this stress however at the same time nancy had a very low stress life relatively speaking like she was financially stable she had a good family support system she was well educated she had a stable job she and she owned her own home like so overall she had pretty low levels of stress relatively speaking which made all of this even more confusing for her. And what's worse is also when she came to me, she was starting to believe some of the things that she had been told about stress and anxiety or read online about past trauma and repressed emotions. So from what she could remember and from her experience, she didn't really have any traumatic events in her childhood. She didn't have a traumatic childhood. Sure, she had some events in her life that were not fun and were difficult and scary, but um, but she was being told that chronic pain was a result of past traumas and, re and repressed emotions. And so she was starting to actually worry if there was some trauma that she had blacked out of her memory. Like this, these were her thoughts that were coming to mind as she was navigating the internet world searching for explanations for her chronic pain condition that no doctor could seem to explain or help her solve. So she was seeing this connection between trauma and emotions and stress and pain and was really afraid that this really was, was what was going on for her because nothing else really seemed to explain her condition, like her doctors couldn't. And so if you can relate to any part of Nancy's story, what I wanna to say to you is this, 
it could be that you have had past, a past history of trauma. You could have lived through some very traumatic events. You may have had a very stressful life. You could have had a very stressful or difficult childhood. Or maybe you didn't have any of those things. What I want to say to you is this. Trauma and stress have been found to be predisposing factors for developing chronic pain. But tra having trauma does not guarantee that you'll have chronic pain. And also having a past history of trauma or stressful or stressful life is not a requirement for developing chronic pain either. Now I'm going to do a whole talk on this topic of trauma some other time, but I want you to know that it can predispose someone to developing chronic pain, but it is not required to develop chronic pain. And so whether or not you have a past history of trauma or have stress, your nervous system can undergo some subconscious changes in the structure and activity causing a sensitivity problem, a problem where your nervous system turns up the pain alarm. Your nerves become better at detecting sensory information, which means a smaller stimulus can cause nerves to fire and can cause pain. Okay, So your spinal cord can also change and start passing more messages up the spinal cord instead of filtering them out. So the message that, the message that your brain is getting from the body is louder and more intense, bigger and more telling it more danger, right? And so your brain then can also change and become less able to accurately interpret information that it's receiving from the body. So it will in a sort of, let's be, it's better to be safe than sorry sort of situation, the brain activates the, those protective responses, one of which is pain. Because pain is the alarm the body uses to let you know if it is trying to pr protect you from potential injury. So we know these changes happen and they're actually quite common. In fact, these changes actually happen in everyone, every human, as it's part of our normal injury responses. However, one in five, one in four to five individuals, the, for one, in, one out of, wow, I can't talk, for one in four to five individuals, these changes stick around and they don't change back on their own. And so what is the role of stress here in all of this? What is stress anyway? So I like to think of stress as a physical chemical in the body, as someone who thinks scientifically and is science-y minded. So I think of stress as a chemical in the body rather than some sort of intangible emotion or feeling. Stress is actually a chemical and that chemical is called cortisol. So cortisol is our stress chemical, and when the body creates more of it, cortisol actually asks, acts to sensitize our nerves. The way you can think of that is all of your nerves in your body have a resting level of electrical activity at all times. So all your nerves are just kind of buzzing along at baseline. And in order for the nerve to actually fire, the electrical activity in the nerve needs to reach a certain threshold. So go from baseline to threshold. So the electrical activity in your nerve is influenced by different stimuli, such as temperature, pressure, stretch, vibration, light touch, movement, um, blood supply and oxygen, uh, immune responses, swelling, and also cortisol, okay? So when you have lots of stress, your body releases more cortisol. And that cortisol interacts with your nerves. It raises the electrical activity in your nerves. We call this raising the sensitivity of your nerves or sensitization. Okay, so on any given day, you would be, you might be able to tolerate sitting, for example, for an hour. But during times of stress, your tolerance for sitting is going to be reduced because your nerves are more sensitized. So a smaller stimulus is going to be needed to cause your nerves to fire and send a danger message. And you could actually also get to a point where there's enough stress and cortisol to actually bring you right up to that threshold and 
um, to raise your baseline level of electrical activity in your nerves right up to the edge of that threshold and cause everything to hurt without having any injury or any additional movement or a strain or wear and tear or anything like that. And so this is something I really want you to understand about your body and about stress because when you can fully understand that stress is actually a chemical that causes nerves to become sensitive, this actually means that you're not crazy. This means that you're not a stress case and it means that your nervous system is sensitive and that's what it means. So sure, absolutely, you may benefit from learning some stress relieving techniques and calming yourself down, calming your nervous system down, calming your body down that may have some effect on your pain in the moment and if it does, by all means, do it. Like that's a good thing, right? But this also means that you would benefit from techniques that will reduce the sensitivity of your nervous system in the long term. And this is the missing piece for my client and many of my clients like Nancy. So in fact, you know, what she said to me after her time working with me, she said, Alyssa, I had been told my whole life that I needed to stress less, but I have never understood how to do that until now. And she said, for the first time ever, in a really practical way, I now understand why my body was stressed, why my body was so sensitive, and actually learn practical drills and strategies that not only had a direct effect on my nervous system and my pain, but also were very real strategies to reducing my stress levels and reducing the impact of stress uh, on my life, right? She had always been told to stress less, but never really understood how to do that. Like no one ever told her how. And in an indirect way, what she learned through, uh, through gaining a deeper understanding of her pain through the lens of neuroscience and through creating consistent pain retraining routines and habits that would allow her to reduce the sensitivity in her nervous system, that was actually the how that no one had ever taught her before. So she realized that she didn't need to reduce her stress in a traditional sense. She just needed practical science-backed ways to retrain her nervous system to be less sensitive to changes in stress or cortisol, right? And it worked. By the end of her experience with me, she had so much more control over her pain, over her body. She was able to reduce the intensity of her pain, the location of her pain from widespread to much smaller, and she had less fear, less anxiety. She was able to start moving more without causing flare-ups. And she started walking regularly and even booked some trips, some travel trips that she had been putting off for years because she now had the confidence in her body to be able to prevent and manage her pain levels. And this is something that you can do as well. Like this is not a psychological treatment. This is not something where you need to do mind retraining, so to speak, right? This is brain and nervous system retraining, okay? This is something that no one teaches you about. Doctors will just tell you to work on your stress management and send you on your way and they won't teach you about your nervous system or how you can actually transform your pain for good without more pills or procedures or physical therapy, right? So let me know in the comments one thing that you learned from this talk today. And with that, that's all I have for today. I will see you next time.